Okay. I think you have done it, but one wasn't missing. Huh? Hmm. Let me see. Let me try to find it. Okay. Okay, so you're all in now. Um, okay, let's discuss. Okay. Okay, so um, let me share it with you the screen. Okay, uh, I think you take a print screen of this screen. You will need this for your assignment too, and also your final exam. So why do electrons flow to the ground? Uh, uh, electrons flow to the ground uh, because the Earth's surface is mainly silicon and oxygen, okay? uh, SiO2. Okay? Uh, more insulators, uh, insulator atoms like to absorb electrons. You see the difference between uh, okay, so this uh, of fan. Here is aluminum, here is plastic. Uh, you put a voltage between here and here, there's no flow. Okay? Uh, because it's an insulator. But if you put it between here and here, there'll be a flow. Why is that? These plastic atoms like to take in electrons, okay? Whereas metal, they like to throw away electrons. So there are a lot of free electrons inside right here. Here, there's no free electrons, so there's no movement, okay? Get the, the picture. Uh, when there's no free, that means there's no carrier for the charge, okay? But here, there's free electrons, a lot of free electrons, because Metals like to throw away one electron or two electrons, like copper like to throw away two, iron like to throw away two, aluminum like to throw away three, okay? But if you look at uh, insulators like oxygen, oxygen two minus, they like to take in extra two, okay? Uh, so, so that's why the insulator atoms, there's no free electrons to carry the charge, okay? So if you put a voltage, I mean, if you look at uh, VIR,
Okay, this is the most important formula in analytical vehicle IR. I'll tell you a story of this. Uh, normally, I tell stories so you can remember. Okay, uh, stories is, are the best way to make people remember. I'll give you an example. Um, uh, the frequency of Sarawak is 50 hertz. Okay. Actually, it's not 50. Uh, it's 50 hertz, but it's not 50. It is actually... Okay. 49.95 hertz. So what's the meaning of this? The original combustion engine and, and coal power plants, actually the, uh, the turbines actually turn at 50 hertz or 49.95 hertz. Okay. Uh, now it's not exactly like that. Okay. Uh, uh, you see, like hydro, it is not powerful enough, so it turns slowly. Okay. So they use some gear system to get it up to uh, 50 hertz or 49.95 hertz. Okay. Uh, whereas the gas turbine, gas turbine is a bit low. Okay. Uh, you must remember roughly like we are the main power station in Sarawak. We don't have many. We got Pakun, Murum, which is the main power. And then we got Bintulu, which is usually the main power. Because Bintulu is so cheap. Uh, and the gas coming from the sea, I've been to the power station, of course, because I was working in Cisco. You can see the big pipe coming in from the ocean. Okay? And then it goes straight to the power station. There's a bit of a, a small little box there. And I believe that box is to heat up the gas. Uh, because one of my former FYP, uh, uh, Alexon, uh, he is now working for oil and gas company that makes heaters for the oil and gas. I also didn't know. It just uh, about one month ago, I called him and he explained to me, out of the ocean, it is somehow cold. It's too cold to be used. The oil and gas is too cold to be used. So they need to be heaters and his company is just making the heaters. Some of them as big as a house. Yeah. So the one in Sesco that I saw a box the pipe coming in from the ocean, and I see a box there. It's not as big as a house. It's about about as big as maybe my chest, from my leg to my chest. Okay, uh, and I believe that's a heater. Okay, so that that's all. You know, coming from the ocean, going straight to the power station, there's a box in between, and the box should be a heater. Okay, so that's why it's so cheap to produce uh, electricity from gas turbines. Okay, gas turbines in Bitlo. So the main power station are gas turbine, hydro, coal, and a combustion engine. Uh, we still have one. Okay, so okay. So these are the the main uh, power of Sarawak, okay? So, uh, gas turbines, hydro, coal, and ICE. ICE used to be number one. All over Sarawak, when I was in Cisco, uh, every town had combustion engine. So I used to go to all the different combustion engine all over Sarawak. That's my job last time, okay? Uh, now it's almost all gone, okay? Uh, as far as I know, Limbang and Lawas is still use com using combustion engine because it's isolated, right? Because uh, uh, there's no road between Miri and, and Limbang. Okay, so uh, they're building the road I heard right now. They, I've, I, the road, I'm not 100% sure, but because I'm in electrical, I'm sure the line, the 275 kV line they're building right now, below Brunei, okay? Uh, especially now during COVID, they find it a big problem because uh, Lawas and Limbang is pretty much isolated from the rest of our world because uh, you can't go through Brunei anymore, I think, because of COVID. So what ICE is? Uh... Uh, ICE is internal combustion engine. Oh. And, uh, so internal combustion engine is just like your car engine, uh, okay? your diesel car engine. So uh, that was the main power of Sarawak when I was, uh, I mean, yeah, I can say majority of the power at that time was from ICE. Okay, uh, and because all the small towns they have their own ICE engines. Okay, 
So uh, Limbang, right now it's only Limbang and Lawas, which is using ICE. Uh, they are building a hydro there. I, I don't know the progress of it. Um, but they are still mainly ICE because they are kind of totally isolated from the rest of Sarawak, especially with the COVID. And then I think Sarawakian cannot go to Brunei, I think, right now. That's what I heard. So they are pretty much isolated from Sarawak. So the government is in a very big uh, attempt to, to build the, the road below Brunei. Uh, uh, I have confirmation that they are doing the power lines, okay? There are two Sarawakian power lines below Brunei. Uh, in fact, I'm supposed to do a, a partial training there. Uh, I didn't get time off yet. Maybe uh, your semester break, I'll take one week off to go in. Uh, because for me to upgrade my license, I need to work on some big projects. And the guy building the project actually offered me to, to be stationed with him for one week. Okay, so, uh, uh, so gas turbine was the main because Bintulu uh, was producing most of the power because it's so cheap. Okay. Uh, uh, the, the, the pipe coming from Osho goes straight to the power station and uh, uh, it costs only three cents per kilowatt hour. Three cents, three cents per kilowatt hour. They okay, sell it at thirty-three cents, and now it's thirty-five cents. I think. Okay. Even though they're selling it at thirty-five cents. It is the cheapest electricity in Malaysia. Okay, Samajong is paying much more. It used to be Samajong pay less, but now Samajong is paying much more. Okay. Uh, okay, so, but hydro is cheaper. Uh. Hydro is pretty much free. Okay. So, and then coal, the coal plants are based, the biggest ones are in Muka and Balingan. Balingan is bigger. Balingan is near Muka. Uh, basically, Balingan is the coal mine, okay? So they build a power station pretty much on the coal mine, okay? Uh, Muka, you have to transport it a bit from Berlingan to Muka, okay? So that's very efficient actually, because you are, your coal plant is on the coal mine, okay, Berlingan. I heard it's just, uh, there are three contra two contractors, I think, uh, mining the coal, and it, the, the site is just outside the power plant, okay? So they operate as three different uh, companies, lah. Uh, two companies mining the coal, and then of course, just cooperating the power plant. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so two power plant pretty much in Muka area, uh, Muka and Balingyan, and then uh, uh, one in Kuching, Sajinkat. Uh, so the Sajinkat, uh, Sajinkat coal, they get the coal from Kapit. So the 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 coal mine is basically in Sarawak is Muka and Kapi. Okay, so uh, I I know the person who discovered the coal. Okay? He was my student. So, I mean, he he has probably a, I think a master's degree, but he came to my class because he want to take charge man. So a lot of people with, with high degrees, even PhD, they come to my class because they need to to get the the cert, the charge man cert. Because actually, you cannot do wiring until you have a charge man. Even you have a PhD. When I got my PhD, I called Board of Engineering Machine and oh, I got a PhD, I can do wiring. Oh, cannot. Uh, I, then, I mean, even after I get an IR, I said, no, cannot. I also cannot do wiring. To get wiring, uh, you, you must get wiring and charge man okay? uh, to do wiring. So that's why a lot of uh, high degree people also come to my class to get wiring and charge man. So I advise you to do your wiring and charge man because um, you'll be put ahead of the queue. So far, those people from UCTS who got into SESCO all went through the awarding course, okay? So, uh, so far, like, as far as I know, uh, so I think your chances are much higher once you do the YMAN, because YMAN is kind of a practical course, you know? Sometimes you do your degree, but you don't know how to hold a spanner, hold a plier, you know, uh, it cannot be used very well for the company, so. Uh, in Cisco, uh, if you are a technician, for example, uh, you cannot even go to the site if you don't have a one-man judgment. Yeah, so you'll be office, sit in the office. Of course, they will keep you for long because uh, you know, they cannot use you much. Okay, so uh, one-man judgment, 
worth it. But here they charge quite a lot. What to do? Uh, I mean, maybe you can find a cheaper place to get it. Uh, like my school in Kuching, but it's my school is in Kuching. Uh, hold on. Uh, my, my school in Kuching is, I, I'm just a tuition teacher. I, I don't give you the exam. I'm not allowed to give you the exam. So you can come to my class, but the exam will be in APM. APM, you still need to pay them for exam fee. Much cheaper than uh, 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 what they're telling here. Lah, okay? uh, but uh, I think, uh, yeah, this is a one time payment. I think joining the GS1 is here. <laughs> so far, I don't know anyone who failed the ECTS chat for an exam. But the ABM one or Cisco one, a lot of people fail. Okay, so in Cisco, the rate of passing is like I remember one of my exam, EIC, uh, 30 people, maybe three or four pass, uh, the rest fail. Okay. Oh, so <laughs> hard, uh, sir. Yeah, UCTS, I don't think anyone fails so far. Okay. Uh, I, I never heard of anyone who failed his DF exam. Okay, so maybe it's still worth it. Huh? Okay. Uh, I mean, these exams are tough. You know, some people are overconfident. Uh, I remember one guy, master degree from England, electrical power, come to my class. I uh, yeah, relax really like, because he's master from England. Uh, you know, a bit proud of that. He fell because the the exam, even the theory exam, is more practical based. Okay, in, in your your university exam, they give you a lot of calculation which uh, nobody uses. Okay, I, I frankly haven't. I worked in industry for so long, and I never seen anyone do calculation. Okay, nobody uses calculation in, in industry. Okay, that was that's me. Okay, the only calculation we use is okay a few little bit calculation like that one also. Can take one day off and do the calculation. I think these are like what is drop calculation, small little calculation that if you really have a uh, problem, you take one day off and, and go through internet and find out how to do. Okay, uh, my former roommate in UCTS was uh, IR Ting. He is a very big engineer, you know? most of the biggest project in Sarawak he was involved, and not only involved, sometimes he's a boss. Like the Egan Bridge, you know, big bridge, Egan Bridge. He was a top guy for Egan Bridge. And then when I was young, uh, after my form six, I, I have no money to go to university. Those days, Sarawak no university or so. You didn't even just start. So uh, I worked four years, uh, uh, first as a wait, waiter, and then later uh, building the coaching port. The Kuching port, KPA port of Kuching. Now Kuching has two ports, KPA port and Sonari port. Uh, the Sonari is newer one. Uh. So, uh, the one of the top guy those days, uh, I didn't know, was IRT. So when we met in the same office, hey, I, I, I told him I was working in the KPA port. Ah, are you? Fuck. <laughs> he didn't know. Uh, he was the top guy of the consultant uh, at that time. Uh, for the KPA port. So uh, I was a small guy, I was, don't even have a degree those days. So I was a small little fly those days, but he was uh, one of the top engineers in the consulting company. I was in the contractor company. The consultant was a British company and uh, the contractor was a French company. They really hate each other. Uh, the French boss always Go to my office. My office is a container office, not a container office on the side. You come to my container office to relax and complain about the British. Yeah, I so said, this British, uh, you know, the Germans attack us, but we still like the Germans better than this stupid British. Wow. The French really don't like the British. Anyway, uh, so I think uh, was a top engineer all over for most of the big projects of Sarawak, and he. I asked him, do you do any calculation all your life of working as an engineer? Just uh, zero. Okay. No calculation. Zero, zero calculation, he said. But he is very good in memorizing. I mean, he memorized, okay, this cement, this mixture, he know exactly how many how, how many Newton it can take. Okay, one per square inch, Newton per square inch. Okay, this mixture, this Newton per square inch. That mixture, that Newton per square inch. That, that's how he, he just memorized. Lah. Okay, uh, so uh, so that that's why I, I feel 
there's a disconnect between university and outside. In university, you do a lot of calculation. Outside, you don't do calculation. <laughs> okay. The only calculation I, I do, V equal to IR, V equal to VI. Okay. V equal to VI. And then, what is drop? So, this is the only calculation I ever do in my 27 years of site work. Okay. Okay. Voltage drop a little bit, lah. Not always you got voltage drop. Uh, voltage drop means you know your your source and your load is very far away. Then only you need to do voltage drop calculation. Otherwise, you don't. You just use vehicle IRP or VI. Okay. So uh, there's some disconnect between university education and outside. Uh, uh, in university, uh, uh, some lecturers take pride in giving you complicated IC. Super complicated equation we you know, never use in your life. Uh, what to do? Uh, I, I saw one paper, 100% calculation. Are you sure? And I take a topic. Is this engineering topic or maths? So it's engineering, okay. Well, what to do? Uh, uh, there's too many lecturers who, who went after university straight to education and then they bypassed the working step. So they don't know how to work. Okay. Um, okay, uh, okay, so, uh, okay, so I give you this brief idea of the Sarawak's electrical power system, uh, but roughly how it works is, uh, so right now most of the power is from Bakun. You see, Sarawak got a very good condition, huh? our power is pretty much free because of Bakun, Murum, right, and Barangai. Is free, okay? And then we got the gas turbine in Bintulu, which is pretty much free. So the gas coming from offshore, three cents per kilowatt hour, coming straight to power station. You can't get more efficient than that. And then the coal plant is, the power station is on the coal plant. How how good can you get? Okay, Muka is a little bit far, but Malingyan, which is the largest coal plant in Sarawak, which is coal plant located on the coal, coal mine. So the person who discovered the coal was my student uh, who was working for uh, Uku Aziz. I, I don't know if you heard of him, he's a bit old timer. He was the, the head of UC Malaya, okay? So he started a, a, a company to give water to the poor people, okay? So what they do is, uh, uh, he told me lah, this guy, uh, he put a, Okay, so you put a bomb, you put a bomb, and then you make a loud noise, and, and then he measure, he put sensors, or he put sensors, okay? From the sensor, he read the reading, and he can tell what's below the earth. His aim of doing this is to look for water. So the poor village, uh, survey distance, they can, they can have a underground river water, okay? That's his aim. Uh, he said it's normally a bit red, the, the water that comes off the underground, it tends to be a bit red because a lot of iron content, but he did a lot of uh, studies and found out uh, still can drink, yeah, that water still can drink. But uh, in two of the time he was looking for this water, uh, he found coal. And so he reported to the state government, he found coal in Muka and he found coal in Kapit. Okay, <laughs> and the state government what I heard is it didn't compensate his company with one cent. Okay, so, but the state has a lot of coal now, making millions and millions of uh, ringgit out of coal, but his company was not compensated with one cent. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so our coal is in Kapit and uh, uh, Muka. Okay. Uh, and a lot of people don't know this. Our former Minister of Indian Energy, that means the head of Sesco Tanaga National, uh, was uh, during the last government, I forgot, uh, one lady. Ah, uh, yeah, I forgot her name. Let me search online.
Ó, aqui é uma página. You'll be in. Okay. Uh, so the current one is, uh, you can see from here. Uh, okay, this is a current. Minister of Energy, Samsu Anwar Nasara. Okay. Uh, uh, former one was Yobin. Okay. Interesting. Uh, wow, not at all. Okay. Okay. Uh, so Yumi In uh, made a statement. Uh, one time I clearly remember there's no coal in Malaysia. Why are we doing coal energy? <laughs> Actually, she don't know there's a lot of coal in Malaysia, but only in Sarawak. Uh, there's a problem with a lot of West Malaysians and they feel Sarawak is not part of West Malaysia. Okay. Uh, so, uh, only Sarawak has coal in the whole Malaysia. Okay. Uh, basically, just in Muka and, and Kapit. Okay. Uh, so, if you look at the power system, right now it's mostly hydro. And how it works is basically it's rushing out of Bakun, the power is rushing out of Bakun, and it, uh, there's a lot of step up and step down. But where is it going heading for? It is heading for your 11 kV transformer. Okay, because your 11 kV transformer has like this. This to 11 kV transformer, okay? So it is a delta and star. And this star point, which is a neutral point, has about between 15 to 40 earth rods. Mostly in Cebu is 40. Okay, Kuching sometimes 15, enough. Miri, Bintulu, normally 15, enough. Okay, but in Cebu you need 40. So I ask people, uh, nobody can answer me. Then I figured out, of course, there's no salt in Cebu's water. You see, the, the Miri, Bintulu, and Kuching are closer to the ocean. Uh, so the, the land is a bit salty. So that's why you only need between 15 earth rods. Okay? But in Cebu, the salt water from the ocean will never be Cebu. It's too far away. So there's not enough salt in Cebu's water. So that's why you need extra earth rods. Yeah, you need 40 earth rods for Cebu. So why is this important? You see, this can be found in your, your housing estate. Every housing estate is one. They call it RMU. Okay. The RMU is basically the transformer plus the switch gear. The switch gear to on and off the 11 kV. Okay. Uh, and the low voltage 415. So basically, this transformer is 11 kV in. Okay. So 
for this one, oh, I learned KB in and 4 on 5 out. Okay. So you might be wondering why 4 on 5, my house not 4 on 5. Okay, that's because. Okay, you can see here. Why they call it four and five? The phase to phase voltage is four and five, but phase to neutral is two forty. Okay, phase to phase is four and five. Phase to neutral is two forty. Okay. Okay. So that's, so. Why, so that's why in your house you measure two forty, but when people name voltages of lines. They name it by the face-to-face -face voltage. So, so the, all the big voltages in, in Sarawak, which are basically uh, so these are all the voltages used in Sarawak. Okay. In Sumanjong, they use one extra, which is 500 kb. Okay, we haven't used 500 kb. Uh, we have one new line of uh, transmission towers. You can see it when you go between Kuching and Serian. Uh, but three quarter of the journey, you see one big overhead line uh, on the side of the road, red, and they paint it. The tower is painted red and white. Okay, uh, that is a the final KB line, okay? That's supposed to be from Kuching all the way to Miri, okay? Uh, but the final KB line going to be energized with 275. That means the, the line is capable of final KB, but they're going to energize with 275 until future time. That means future time, they, in all the, the, the substation, they're going to change the transformer to final KB. Right now it's 275, okay? So the main line, the main... Uh, can you say the main artery uh, of Sarawak is 275, okay? So it's between uh, Kuching and, and Miri. Okay, they haven't gone to Lawas yet. They are building to Lawas right now. Okay, it is the main artery of Sarawak, and from this main artery, they take out all the smaller voltages. Okay? So, uh, uh, okay. So what is happening is from Bakun, the power is rushing. You can imagine rushing out to all of us Sarawak to all these different voltages. Where is it heading for? You see your housing estate got a substation and that is called RMU. RMU. Okay? Where 11 kV comes in and comes out 4 on 5. But in that, the, the, the star point of the transformer, the center point is joined to a lot of the fraud. That is the final destination of all our of Sarawak. Okay. All the 11 kV substation star point. Okay. Because that's the only place you can reach the earth. You see, the mine of Earth City is very simple. Out of the earth. Lightning strike the earth. Why? Because the earth is made of silicon and oxygen insulators. Okay. So it's rushing all over Sarawak. It's not interested in your house. Your house got lamp, TV, all that. Your lamp, TV is on the way. On the way, it produce, make your TV on, make your your house light on, okay? You turn your fan, okay? Uh, that's on the way. It's not interested in all these things. It just has to go through your house before it can reach the, reach this, okay? So that is the final destination of all the power inside the world, this 11 kV transformer. Okay, 
So all LCD just loves the earth. Okay? Lightning will distract the earth. Actually, lightning is very powerful. Huh? Uh, I heard one lightning can power the earth for 20 years, the whole earth for 20 years. Okay? Uh, so there are people, that's why I, I told you, I think last, last week, I don't believe the Egyptians were, were slave owners and all that. They are very highly intelligent people. Uh, because I believe even the whole pyramid uh, was a possession. It's not a, it's not a tomb. And I heard even the, they said the king was, was emperor or whatever was buried there, but later they found out it's not true. <laughs> emperor was not really buried there, it's buried in some other place. Uh, so I believe the pyramid is a possession. And then um, I believe human civilization went through very high level of technology, go down. High level technology, go down. That's what happened to humanity all these uh, millions of years. Okay. I don't believe a thousand of years. Uh, if you go and look in Google, they tell you humans uh, civilization started around 6,000 years ago, which is only nonsense. Uh, I, I, I don't, I'm sure humans were here much longer than that. Okay. And the pyramid, I believe it's power station. Why I believe it's power station? Uh, you, you heard of piezoelectric material. Sorry. So piezoelectric material, uh, basically all stones, if you put electricity into, into it, it sort of vibrate. And if you vibrate it, it produces electricity. Okay? So all stones have that property. Okay? Uh, but certain stones they found are, are more of it. Okay, they, they found they have more property of this. That means you uh, you put you shake it as it comes out even more than others. So these are piezoelectric. Okay, uh, you can find this in uh, a lot of places. Uh, your lighter, your cigarette lighter. I don't smoke now, but I tell you the cigarette lighter that sell nowadays is actually piezoelectric. When you light it, you are moving the the stone material and the stone material produces a spark. Okay, so that, that's how the spark comes out with your lighter, cigarette lighter. Oh, no, it's fine. Okay, yeah, it's, it's a piezoelectric material. Okay, let me show you. Better to show you. Ah, I cannot find it. No, wait, you know, like that, right? Some of you may even smoke, but don't smoke either. <laughs> uh, my father was a smoker. Uh, he died in age 88. He stopped smoking at 50. And uh, then 88, uh, I went to collect the report, medical report from the hospital. They got a lung cancer. He smoked, right? He didn't smoke for the last 30, 38 years. That's okay. But he smoked before, right? Ah, uh, yes. Oh, yeah, that's why he died. Yeah. I mean, that's why he has lung cancer. Okay. Uh, he died soon after that. So, I mean, uh, the effect is not just, you You stop at 50, 38 years, you stop smoking and still the effect is there. Okay. Uh, he was a big smoker at one time. I think in the 1970s, if you're a boy who don't smoke, it's very strange. I, I think that was the case. Uh, I don't think I know of a person, a boy, male, who didn't smoke in those days. My father, every day when asked me to buy a I got secret for my neighbor. Five by five secret. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I, uh, you see, why I believe the pyramid, why I believe the pyramid is a power station. Uh, you see, the blocks of stones which the pyramid is made are huge. They're huge stones, you know. Even for a crane to carry nowadays, it's very difficult because it's so huge. Okay, I mean, crane can carry container. Container is mostly empty, right? This stone is solid material, and even for a modern day crane to carry, it's very difficult. And then, why would the ancient people use such big stones? 
and they can use more stones. I mean, they are humans as intelligent as us. <laughs> Why would they be so stupid to use a big stone when they can use a small stone? Okay. Uh, and then the the space in between the stone is hundred percent flat. I mean, even with the more most modern machines, it's very hard to make it that flat. Okay. Uh, very hard to uh, almost impossible to make it that flat. Okay. And it takes no cement. Between the stone, there's no cement. Okay. It's just a flat stone. So why would they do that? I mean, you can make small stone. They're not able to homes for their own use. They use small stone. Why should they make this so big stone? And then why should they make it so flat? Okay. Uh, I mean, cement, you know, anything dries will become like cement, like cow dung or something like that. You can put in between the stones to make it stick together. Um, okay. uh, so why would they make it so flat and use big stones? Because they want the whole pyramid to be one big stone. That's what they're attempting to do. They want the big pyramid to be one big stone. And then they found they found uh, small tunnels they found tunnels going to the center of the pyramid that that tunnel is too small for human to go through okay and then in the center of it they sent a robot inside there and they found us a big container so why would they do that? They pour two different chemicals in there, and then they mix together inside there. And then you know, just like when you boil rice, you get vibration. You get vibration, you get electricity. And the top of the pyramid, the very top of the pyramid used to be copper. It produced copper. I mean, it produced electricity. And all over the world, they found things like this. Okay. All over the world, they find things like there's a name for this thing. This thing doesn't make sense. It is, I forgot the name of this. Uh, there's an official name for it, but basically, basically, a stone that is straight up. In the ancient people, if you don't want to make an umbrella, it makes sense. Like you, you make a structure like this with a roof so people can stand under there for shade. It makes sense, like a tree, like, okay? But it's straight up and there's no no roof. Why would people, ancient people do that? I mean, in the ancient time, people are more concerned about benefits, right? Because they live a simple life, uh, they grow crops, they can eat. Whatever they do, got some benefit to them. Why would they make something like that with no benefit? Okay. So what some scientists believe is these are actually energy receptors. The pyramid produce electricity, and there are pyramids all over the world, not just Egypt. They found pyramids even in Japan under the sea. Okay. In in the South America, a lot of pyramids. So they are all energy transmitters and all these are energy receivers. Uh, that's one theory. Uh, that, uh, one scientist. Oh, they, they already use wireless. Sir. Exactly. Yes. Wireless have been uh, introduced by Tesla in 1900. Okay. So the world already have this technology of wireless and a lot of a lot of things we are not using right now. They already have. They don't tell us because uh, imagine you have wireless technology. You have uh, okay, induction motor cars, which is already available, like Tesla car is induction motor car. Uh, and then uh, uh, you you basically get free energy, okay, because uh, all these pyramids stuff can produce electricity. Uh, so you have free en energy. Uh, imagine you drive from Kuching to Cebu, going back to UCTS. Uh, you don't need to put petrol in your car, free. Okay? And then uh, uh, the food is also cheap because Tesla made a machine. She said, what is uh, fertilizer? Watch out. Fertilizer is basically an H3. Okay. Fertilizer is basically an H3. Okay. The 
plant only one of nitrogen, but nitrogen is a gas, so the, the plant can also be a gas, right? So in, in ABF, they change it to NH3, give to the plant. So Tesla said, hey, somebody eight percent of our A is nitrogen. Why can't I get the A nitrogen go inside the soil? So he made a machine, free energy machine. You 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 sprinkle some earth and pour inside the machine. Come out, nitrogen filled soil, free fertilizer, the best quality one. No side effect because this one no side effect because ammonia, right? For some side effect. This one pure nitrogen in your plant. The plant only one nitrogen, so you got free nitrogen. So you're driving from Kuching, you stop somewhere in between to have a food. The food is so cheap because fertilizer is free. So you have a perfect world. You never need to fill petrol in your car. You don't need Cisco because you, the whole Cisco grid will be gone. You don't need Cisco because everything is wireless. Okay, everything transmits wirelessly. So, uh, uh, but what happened? You don't need petrol, petrol also will die. You don't need Cisco, Cisco will die. You don't need the big fertilizer factory in Bintulu, ABF, ABF will die, okay? Uh, so, uh, big people make money from all these big things. The rich people, the billionaires of the world, they make money from all these things. The Petronas, worldwide, different companies, all the different Cisco's in the world, all the different um, ABF fertilizer plants in the world, big money of Rich people cannot make money, they cannot be billionaires anymore, what happened? Everyone's about the same. You cannot be a billionaire. You can, if you sell Kwetiao, you can make, you work hard, you can get a bit more money, that's it. There's no special money, no giant money anymore. So everyone is about equal. You know what? The big millionaires don't like this idea. They want to be the boss, everyone, slaves. They like that way. So they hampered, they, they, they killed Tesla's technology in 1900. That means we can have, we could have had all that in 1900 and, and no world pollution in 1900 days okay? Uh, now we have destroyed a lot of the Earth's environment uh, 100 years later, uh, 120 years later. Um, war here and there, always fighting here and there for the oil and whatever. Uh, uh, all because of the rich men. The few rich men, you know, rich men are not many, you know, they're just only a few thousand of them. I think even I heard some people say just 8,000 of them, total worldwide. 8,000 super rich people and the rest of the world are normal people. So if we release technology, the world people rich and the 8,000 people become normal, okay? Uh, we don't release, uh, the 8,000 become, become rich and move over the rest of us, lah. okay? So that's, uh, that's where we are in right now, lah, okay? Uh, okay. So, uh, so the world is in problem mainly because of the rich people, lah. They like to uh, somewhat touch the poor people okay. because they like to be the boss over the poor people. That's basically what's like yeah, the idea. They don't like the idea of everyone about equal. They don't like the idea. Okay. So anyway, so just remember for your assignment uh, two, uh, all electricity is heading for this point. Okay. The earth. Okay. And why is it? I told you to take the green screen just now. I'll show you again. Ah, yeah, sorry. Okay. Okay. So you can take a green screen of this. Why does electron flow to the ground? Electron will flow to the ground because the earth's surface is mainly uh, silicon and oxygen in the form of SiO2. Both are insulators. Insulator atoms like to absorb electrons to become negatively charged ions. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is why when a voltage exits on the insulator, there's no current flow. Because all electrons in the insulator 
have been absorbed by the insulated atoms. Okay, so there's no free electrons for the voltage to push. Uh, okay, SiO2 is a semiconductor, so it partially conducts, which is more of an insulated. So the electron absorbing, so it is electron absorbing is able to con uh, conduct the flow of electron a little. Okay, uh, so if the Earth is a if the Earth is a ball of plastic. Okay. If the Earth is a ball of plastic, also it one electron, right? Because all insulator like plastic one electron. Okay. So lightning will still strike the Earth, but the the plastic atoms below the surface cannot attract the electron because it's an insulator. There's no flow between the top and bottom, top layer and the bottom layer. There's no flow because it's an insulator. But silicon dioxide is a semiconductor, so. It's not just the top that wants an electron, even the ones below also can, can attract the lightning. Okay? The ones below also can attract lightning from top. So the Earth is a huge sink of electrons. Okay? That's why all electron flow from lightning, from power stations, all end up on the Earth. Okay? Okay. So let me continue with that one. So, if the Earth is made of plastic ball, it will attract electrons, but this electron cannot flow within it. Okay, so lightning strike cannot flow through it, thereby resulting in a crater of modern plastic. Okay, if the Earth is a ball of iron, which has excess electron, okay, because iron gives off electron, give off electron, so it will not attract electron from the lightning. Because electrons are, attract, uh, are not attracted to a heap of electrons on the Earth's surface, because there will be a heap of electrons. If, if the Earth is a ball of iron, there will be a heap of electrons on the Earth's surface. So lightning will never, you know, negative, negative repel. They, they won't be going to the Earth anymore. Lightning might strike, I don't know, to space or something. Okay. Therefore, because the Earth outer layer is mostly SiO2, all form electrons out of homes, factories, from lightnings, out of the earth. In other words, the earth is a single electrons. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, second thing. Uh, okay. The how the transformer works. Uh, it's not. So just now I show you this one. What's the meaning of this? What's the meaning of this? Let me show you. Okay. The tree phase red, yellow, blue, it goes in a delta form here, and here it goes in a star form, okay? So if you look at a transformer winding, it's like this. Okay, it is a delta, okay? You see a delta here. Red, Goes to the first coil and then it goes to yellow. Okay, so basically the coil is here. Okay, the coil is there. You can see the coil out there. Okay, so that's how it goes red, yellow, yellow to blue, and blue go back to red. That's delta. Okay, other side. Okay, 
సో అసలు చేస్తారు రెడ్ కోసం ఇంట్లో ఎల్లో కోసం ఇంట్లో బ్లూ కోసం ఇంట్లో సో బేసిక్ ఎర్ఫాల్గా బేసిక్ ఏ కోయను అట్ దిస్ త్రీ పాయింట్స్ రెడ్ ఎల్లో టూ సో ఆఫ్ కోర్స్ ఆల్ ఇంట్లో కెన్ జాయిన్ Okay, all the users can join. Okay. And of course, uh, you need much more turns on the 11 KB. Why? Because the formula is like this. Okay, so I, this is how I remember it, because in the exam, if you make this wrong, the answer will be so far off, okay? So in Cisco exams, you know, uh, when in charge men, 100% this will come out. And a lot of my students, I have a good formula, right? so I, I teach them how to remember. You don't remember the formula, right? you just remember the phone number. You can remember your girlfriend's number, right? okay? One, two, one, two, two, one. Okay. So, one, two. One, two, two, one. Okay. And then you change to primary, secondary, primary, secondary, secondary, primary. Okay. So, you use three steps to remember it. You remember straight away this one, you might miss something. You might put one upside down. Okay. So, that's why when you come to exam, straight away write this. For sure, come out in the exam. So straight away, write this in the rough paper. Then you don't, you don't make a mistake. Okay. So uh, why I say this one need to be more? Because the voltage is directly proportional to the number of turns. And, and the voltage in the incoming here is 11 kV, right? So you need much more turns. Okay, you need much more turns. Because it's 11 kV, it's only for one part, so less turns. Less turns, less voltage. Okay. So that's a transformer. So so basically, uh, you must pretty much draw the circuit uh, for your excitement tool and, and show where is it going to. Uh, the whole energy from a cone is actually going to this uh, neutral star point. Okay. So the whole energy of the whole factory uh, or housing estate is going to this neutral subway. Okay. Okay. So uh go back to assignment. Okay, so, so that is part of your assignment. Uh, explain why all a city heads to the earth. Oh, okay, let me show you one more thing, the periodic table.
You see this? So all the pink color elements are electrons only. The one is also it, it wants to get rid of electrons. All the pink color likes to throw away electrons. Yeah. And the yellow ones are electrons only. Okay. And then the green ones are like, you know, homosexual. <laughs> Yeah, half this side, half that side. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so all the pink ones, uh, uh, they like to throw away electrons. This one like to take in electrons, and uh, green ones are in between, half this side, half this side. Okay. Okay. So you can put your predict table also in your assignment. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Why the thing is? So the the first part explain why all LCD heads to the earth is uh, the, what I just said just now. Okay. You can explain all that lah. Okay. And then explain how earthing is vital for safe running an induction motor and generator. See, uh, motor for example. Okay. I, I did I did uh, run a motor in my factory last time. Twenty five horsepower. I put the red yellow blue in. I put red yellow blue in. But I take out the earth. Okay. The green wire. I just take it out. The green wire. Green wire is going to the body. Okay, I took out the green wire. It run. Tuck, 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 tuck. That's the sound it made. Okay, I put back the green wire. Join to the body only, not to any, not to any circuit. I just join to the body. <laughs> it sounds so much different. I actually, tried. To, I actually wrote this in my book and some of the papers I wrote. At least in English, we can somehow spell it out what I just said. Da, 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 da. You can spell it out. I heard in some languages you can't. Uh, because my, my son is studying in, in Japan University. I said, can you do that? Very difficult. They cannot give a sound, sound that's not in a language. You can't, you can't write it out. In English, at least we can write it out somehow. Da, 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 da. And then, doo. a bit of great work for me. Lah. But in English, you still can write it out, the sound. Yes, sir. <laughs> I heard in, yeah, in a lot of languages you can't. I mean, like Chinese and Japanese, you, you can't. Uh, you can't just create a sound in, in using writing. Okay. Uh, my son is studying uh, a degree in Japan. Uh, actually, right now he's studying from Kuching, uh, online. Okay. Uh, so he tell me a lot of things about Japanese. Lah. He apply himself. It's not that I tell him to go. He apply. He loved Japan from young. He was always watch this uh, Naruto, this thing. So after four five, he he himself apply online, and then he call for interview. Uh, reject. Takuto Sasai reply back. Why he must get it to JBA, and JBA give him the scholarship. So now he's supposed to go to Japan, but the COVID is uh, online from home and coaching. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I think that's an advantage uh, for English lah, when you write research paper. So, uh, so this is an important experiment that a lot of people don't know. Uh, seriously, a lot of people don't know because even engineers, they say, oh, yeah, this, this motor only use real blue or four to join the, the earth wire. Okay. It really cannot run at all. You tuck, 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 tuck. Big difference. You join the green wire. Mm, what's happening? You see, eh? there's such thing as eddy current. 
okay uh, adikaran uh, is actually generation of rsd in the wire itself for example okay uh, you know from bakun if you have if you have a, a dc system so you are generator you go to the old house and come back it's, it's just like a pipe a pump uh, pumping water right but if ac say it's joined like this like it's not joined like this but it, because it joined the other, side, other end is the earth right so uh, here is bakun and the other end is the earth so it's going to earth come back going to earth come back going to your your housing estate subscription come back so that, that's how it's actually moving back and forth okay so basically over all overhead line the electrons moving back and forth okay so we expand it that is einstein's idea you cannot understand something you make it big so you can see it okay so i assume the electron is moving from here to here okay from here to here okay so it changes speed here say i assume one electron not this one electron here change speed go here change speed go here change speed here maximum speed right it's just like you throw a stone throw a stone at the top of movement in zero speed and then it comes back and down again right so electron fast speed yeah, slow down just zero speed yeah, zero speed so what's happening here at this point is maximum speed so assume the electron got uh i think before i go through that let me explain to you how this one works this is this fbi right let's put like a gun first you don't put like a gun uh, you get confused that's how you put like that then your fbi is a lot i mean it's wrong already you must put like this okay fbi okay by american secret service fbi okay uh so F is direction of force they tell you in school, right? And B is direction of magnetic field, and I is a current. Okay, so you got a wire like this, and then the magnet go across. There is a magnet go across, produce current inside there, right? So what is actually happening? You see, say this magnet is here. Say you got ten field lines. The wire sees zero because the wire is so far away. It sees zero field line. As it goes across, you see uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 9, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So increasing of magnetic field lines until and then zero. Zero increase zero. Okay. So it's seeing a variable field density. Okay, so the wire is seeing a variable field density. Variable means here is zero. Is what is seeing? It's seeing zero. It goes until high, and then goes to low. So this one seeing variable. Only if we see variable field density, you get a current flow. So basically, this F, which in school they tell you is a force, I put. I wrote a book. Uh, I say no, this actually it's not accurate to call this a force, we call it variable field density. It's a force. How do you explain transformer? Transformer to call it not in contact. How there's no force inside there, how from here can go here. Okay. So that's why it's not accurate to call it a force. It's more accurate to call it a variable field density. For example, say this is a magnet. Okay. This is a magnet. The biggest magnet in the world, which is right now in CERN. CERN is a Switzerland laboratory. Lah, okay? Right now, they have the biggest magnet in the world. At least that's what they say. Lah, okay? So they have a huge magnet on top of wire. There's no current inside there. Why? you got to move the magnet a little bit. If you start moving, then you get current inside there. If you're stationary, there's no current inside there. Okay? So the magnet must move. And when the magnet moves, you've got variable field density. That's why I call this variable field density. B, north to south, B current. Okay. So in a wire, I told you for example, Bakun, so the electron is going back and forth. Uh, electrons are magnets. Okay, electrons are magnets. 
So it's going from here, here say you got 10 field lines. That means uh, the lines below it, okay? So you got 10 field lines. Here you got 10. Equal T plus one, as you very slow. Lah. T plus one, 10. T plus two, 10. T plus three, 10. Four, 10. So around here, you see a lot of field lines. Okay, a lot of field lines here. Here only 10 field lines. Here only 10 field lines. But here, a lot of field lines because T plus one, 10. Because here, maximum speed, right? Here, slow down to zero. Yeah, slow down to zero. So there's a lot of field lines here. So you got F already. You got variable field intensity already. Okay. So you got variable field density. You got B because the electrons are magnets. Then you got I. Okay. So so some electron are this way because this is north south of the of the electron, the magnet. Okay. So some electron this way, some electron this way, some electron that way, some electron that way. So what is happening? There's generation of electricity within the wire. Okay. Within the wire, copper or aluminum wire, there's generation of electricity. You don't want this, but it happens. And this will push the whole vacuum electron also out of the surface. Okay, the whole vacuum electron also will be out of the surface. Okay. So in overhead line, like the one crossing USDS, that, that one crossing USDS in front of your, your gate, that's 132 kV, that means next to the, the KLT campus, okay, in front of KLT campus, that is 132 kV, okay. The center has no power, no electron moving inside, it's only in the outside, okay. So that's why if you look at the overhead line, the center, they, they used to this strength, I show you. Okay. So this, this thing where the electrons only move on the outside is called skin effect. Okay. Uh, okay, let's see here. Phi. The phi is normally uh, uh, in most overhead lines. It's, it's just about one cm, uh, less than a cm. It only use less than a cm to travel in our headlines. Yeah, okay? I think the the deadline over here. Uh, okay, no man. Uh, so you see in the the final KV two thousand five hundred two. They use like this. this so these are uh, aluminium, you can see here. Seven strands of steel, which is this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven strands of steel. And these are the concentric circles of aluminium. So these are the conductors, okay? These are the conductors. So one, two, three, four, okay? By four layers of aluminium. One, two, three, four layers of aluminium conductors. And the center is seven strands of steel. So the strands of steel is to give it strength. So you don't fall down in case of something happen. Uh, this will give it strength. Because aluminum is not strong. It's brittle. Okay. Why they do this? Because they know there's no current flowing through the center here. So they might as well give it, use it to give strength. Why, why is it advantageous to give it strength? So they can put the, the, the span you know, in the, the towers. The towers, they can put the towers further away. That's so much cheaper, right? You put towers smaller, short. Of course, one tower here, one tower here. You got to buy the land for the tower. You got to build the tower, string the tower. Very expensive. You can put the tower farther apart. It's very much cheaper, right? So that's why they rather give it strength so you can put the tower further apart. Okay. 
it's much more cost saving. Okay. So, so in AC, only AC has this skin effect problem. Okay. Only AC has this skin effect problem. Why is there no skin effect in DC? Okay. Imagine in DC, current flowing, right? Current flowing in DC. Uh, 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 there is no F. There's no F. Why is there no F? There's no variable. The DC can be super high with DC. The weakest DC in the world flowing through your wire. But there's no F. Because it's consistent. There's no going back and forth for electron. Okay. The electron might be rushing with superpower, but it's stable. It's one power, so there's no F at all. It's just going straight through. It's missing the F. Without F, you cannot get the I. So there's no AD current generator in. Uh, no AD current generator in DC wires. So that's why some of the big power companies, uh, like in China, in USA, in Europe, India, they are using DC now, okay? For very long distance transmission, they use DC because the DC can use a whole conductor. Can use, that means it can transmit 100% more power with DC, okay? Okay. Okay, so, uh, so the, the world of power is moving to DC, but there's only one issue with DC. To convert from AC to DC, you need a state, right? This one from AC to DC, right? The handphone charger from AC can come out DC. When you talk about big power, this thing is too expensive. That's the only issue with DC. So, if you want to do DC like in Sarawak, it's not worth it because our power transmission is not long and big power enough to make it DC. But there's one DC line in Malaysia, it's between uh, Kedah and uh, Thailand. Okay, there's one big power DC line. Uh, so that is used to, you know, if Thailand are in a power, Malaysia will send them. If uh, Malaysia are in a power, Thailand will send down. Uh, okay. There's only one right now in Malaysia. There's none in, in the whole Borneo Island. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, so this is advantageous, but you see what happening in a generator, uh, in a motor, like I said just now. If you have a motor like this, without the green wire, then tak, 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 what's happening? There's AD current generated in the, the frame. Okay. There's AD current generated in the frame. That had to be leaked out. And it's leaked out using the green wire. Okay. So there'll be like small, small typhoons on this frame. You know, electron, it's just like, you know, like typhoon, how they form different pressure, uh, temperature of the air, and then you get a, a hurricane or typhoon, right? So there'll be a small, small typhoons on this frame, so there's no way to go, right? But if you put an earth wire to it, all the typhoon will be leaked out. So there's no more typhoon here. Because there's no typhoon, it runs smooth. It's just like, tuck, 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 tuck. Okay. Very smooth. So earth is very important. And that's for motor. For generator, see. The output is AC, right? Okay. For this is for the motor, right? For generator, the output is AC. Okay. But if you have any current, what happens? The eddy current will, will change the AC output to like this. Very noisy AC current coming out. Okay. 
So that is the reason. That's answer for your second question of your of your assignment. Okay. What is the problem with generators and motors if you don't have a proper thing? Okay. See the second part of the question. Assignment question. Let me come back to it. So this is the second part of your assignment. Uh, so I explained why LCD heads to the earth is the first part that I explained just now. So second part is explain how earthing is vital for safe running of industrial motor and generators. So that's answer. Okay. So I'll send you YouTube. Hopefully YouTube all works out well. Uh, then I'll send you YouTube of this uh, presentation. Uh, uh, you can get answers from there. So third part is describe the methods used to reduce earth resistance. Okay, it's a standard question in all judgment exam in Cisco. Judgment, why men, they all 100% they'll come up with this question. Okay, so how do you reduce earth resistance? Uh, the best way that I know of, let me show you. Okay, before you, uh, 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 let me see. Uh, okay, so this is the meter used to measure the thing distance. Okay, uh, I think none of you have seen this before, right? Anybody, any of you have seen this? Okay, no one. Yes. Oh, where, where do you see it? At uh, KV. You mean uh, industrial training? Uh, college vocational. Oh, wait, coaching? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So only you have seen it, huh? Okay. Okay, so so this is the the meter. Basically you have three probes coming out of this. Uh, let me show you. So is it just there are three wires? When you buy the meter, it comes with all these things, huh? And not not the this one is my own idea. Okay. Uh, I found in this uh, shop in Cebu near the Petronas here. They are selling this fishing line, uh, you know, to fishing line you can roll in and drum like this. So I found exactly red, yellow, and green. So I bought three. So mine looks very nice. Because if you buy from the shop, they don't give you any of this. Uh, they give you the wire, but it's rolled up in a mess. So sometimes at site you have to do earth resistance, you've got to untangle the wire. You take half the time to untangle the wire, then only you start your, your reading. So that's why mine is very neat and tidy. 
I, ro I unroll and then roll back into this. So, and then I, I have a, a bag I bought from a Sipu Mall here, yeah, I think Tucson, which is also round. So it, it just fits nicely inside there. Okay, so that's my buff resistant meter bag. And, and it comes with this. It's one feet long. Okay, so this, what you have to do is you plug in the red, yellow, and green into this, this meter. And at the end of it, you must clip to this this thing. You, you have to push it using your feet. I try already. Pushing using your hand, you don't have enough strength. Push your feet very nice. You can go in nicely into the ground. Okay. And then you clip at the end here. See, it's a groove. The groove here is where you clip it. Okay. And then, and then uh, you just press the... That is how you clip it. Lah. The, the, the yellow and... Yellow and red, you must pull until you cannot pull anymore. Because the factory already measured the length of the, the wire. It must be that specific length. Okay? But the green, no need to pull. The green just clip to your earth rod. This is your earth rod. Okay? That's how you measure your earth resistance. This one wrong, I should be at the end there. Okay? So that's how we say it. This two must be in the same direction. Some people put it. Not same direction is, is wrong. I found the answer is different if you don't uh, you don't put it in same direction. So that's how I say you click to the yellow and into the green. So here the red is already pulled. Then we put in the yellow. Okay, so here we we're doing a, a circle for tower. So after all the welding of the earth rod, there are about ten earth rods in this circle for tower. But after joining up all using welding uh, and copper tape, we, we join all of them. Uh, it's still two ohm fail. They want below one ohm, so we weld some more. We weld some more and become less one ohm fast. Okay. So here it is. So that's the reference meter. You see, uh, a lot of people in Sarawak call this meter mega. Actually, Mega is this one. It's a brand of the Earth Resident Meter from England. This is Sesco. Sesco bought this one, 12,000 ringgit. The one that I bought is about 1,000 ringgit. So this is my, my own one. It's just 1,000 ringgit. This one is Sesco's one, 12,000 ringgit. Okay. So, uh, so this, uh, this is somebody else one. Uh, I mean, could you reach also? Cisco will recognize this brand. Uh, they don't recognize any brand. Uh, so actually, I asked Cisco staff, why you always want Curie Shoe? He said, not that we want Curie Shoe. We have a list of brands. Normally, you know, Fluke is a top brand in the world. Uh, it's in the list uh, of Cisco. But the the cheapest that is well recognized is Curie Shoe. That's why most people in Sarawak contact us, they buy this Curie Shoe brand. Okay. So, uh, so this is a cat well. You have to well the the earth. Uh, is it is the that they call it one inch by one inch. Yeah, okay. you have to weld it to the to the tower. This circular tower. Yeah, okay. use explosive. Uh, but I find it not a good way. Another contractor friend of mine he introduced this method. You see, you see the problem with this wall, wall method. Uh, you see, to, to hold it like this, it's only lucky you can be standing up straight. Normally, they, they put in all the, the bricks here and there to make it straight. Okay? So, not so easy. Lah, okay? uh, here, it's straight, it's flat, so it's okay. But in most cases, it's hard to keep it straight. Because nobody's going to hold the handle. It's explosive there. It's really gunpowder there. So who takes a hold that? What if you explode in <laughs> your hand? So nobody will hold this one, even though it's meant to hold. So uh, so most people put bricks here and there and then uh, keep it straight and then uh, use a, a torch, burn it and run away. Okay. So uh, so that's why one of my contractor friends, he said, better do this way. See? This way. Use a, a copper welding rod and blow torch. 
So he has two tanks of gas. One tank is oxygen, another tank is acetylene. So he carry in his Hilux. Uh, easy. You can use it forever. This one, I think the maximum maximum of this is about 100 times. After that, you need to uh, buy a new one. And some of this, different mold for different joint. If you got T-joint, yeah, like this T-joint, you need to buy one more. Uh, just now, one, okay, like this one, joining the copper wire to earth rod, what, one more. This is already 1,000 plus. Another mold like this, another 1,000 plus. This one, a few hundred ringgit, you can buy the whole thing. And you can use it forever. Okay, so that's why uh, contractors are more favoring this way because the ease of use. Okay, uh, and then you can control your welding properly. Okay, I already tried using the normal only essentially or like the gas, the, the you know the kitchen gas tank. Uh, it takes too long. It's not hot enough. You need oxygen essentially two tanks. That will be hot enough. Okay. And, and some people say, hey, why is this one new? Never heard in Malaysia. It's actually invented by my contractor friend. Okay. Uh, I know that everyone, every work order, they say, cat well, cat well is this one. Okay. Cat well is this one. Yeah, all the service order, sorry, service order is specified cat well. But this contractor friend, his service order also specified cat well, but he do this way. Okay. Uh, so, is it something new? You your own invention? Hey, people making motor, they do the same thing. You know this one? This from a video, a YouTube video. Huh? They're making giant motors. Huh? They, they do exactly the same method. Okay? So it's not, it, it's not, it just happened to have the same idea, but people have been using it before to, to make giant motors, to join wires to giant motors. Okay? So, okay, so the best way to reduce earth resistance uh, okay, you buy one of this. You can see, right? What, what do you see? What do you see on the screen now? Okay, you, you see this one. Electric auger, USD 199. You drill a hole, you put the earth rod in the center of the hole, you take the finest sand you can find and hammer it on it. Okay, that's the best way. Okay, I think it's already late. Uh, I'll continue in the next class. Okay, see you. Okay, see you. Thank next you, week. sir. Okay.